Welcome back to the Tech Shack to another low quality video. Now today we have my personal workstation on the bench because we are upgrading that snowman cooler that's in there now a while back. I did a video on that snowman and how it was able to tame the 5800X 3D. Now that was just supposed to be a temporary cooler and say high pressure um, retaining mechanism capable of catapulting a CPU out of, out of the socket. I've been putting off replacing it but it is thermal throttling and as of November I signed a new client and I am producing a lot of their their content. I run the Rumble channel, they do a weekly podcast. In fact, tomorrow night we go live. Today I have to actually write out the entire format of the show on this. And then Thursday I have to chop up all the videos and shorts and stuff and any other footage that I filmed while I was there on this. So I need to get this back up and running. I went with the cheapest AIO I could find on Amazon because, hey, hell, if this fails, I could just throw that cooler back on for now and then put something better in. But in all seriousness, there isn't very many options for 120 millimeter AIOs, and I really only have room for it there. I could run a 240 here, even though there's 360 fans, the top and bottom is super tight, so I wouldn't be able to actually fit a full radiator in there, and the top, you can barely even fit fans in there. There's such a thin little gap there. So, I'm going to throw this in. This actually had really good reviews despite being like sub $35. Um, Thermal Right is actually decent. I've used quite a few of their smaller coolers. This little white one I'm going to put on the screen here. This tamed the 3700X and that mini ITX build with a hefty little boost on the overclock. So, their coolers are actually decent. So, this might work out much better than you think. And it'll give me RGB back, because when my um, my RGB air cooler died, I was quite disappointed. So we're gonna get this installed, get everything up and running, and see how she goes. All right, so my main concern of seesawing out the um, CPU has to do with the fact there's so much down pressure when you clamp it in that if this uh, thermal paste is solid and rips it from its socket, it literally will throw it across the room. So I ran Cinebench on a 10 minute loop and then immediately shut it down and pulled the cooler off and came right off without an issue. So it is all installed, the cables are managed as best as they can, there's not a lot of space in there for cable management, like not a lot of gaps for fans, even though there is mount there, you really wouldn't fit one with the VRMs. Um, you really couldn't fit a 360mm rad, even though you can fit three fans, the overhang for the radiator and the fittings wouldn't fit. And I could have gone one, uh, 240, but then I would have lost the fan mount. And, so it was easier just to do this and give this cooler a try, and if it doesn't work, I'll throw a decent air cooler on it, but I think this cooler would be just fine. Yeah, I would have replaced this case. I wouldn't even bother with this case, but I originally got it with the Ryzen 2600 um, build I had in here before as a Facebook Marketplace bundle. I paid like $200 for a complete system, mostly all the parts still new in box, except for the CPU and um, all I had to do was drop in my graphics card, my better graphics card, because it even came with an RX 570 um, that I just didn't use, and my um, SSDs for my workstation, and then I upgraded it to the B550 um, and 5800X3D. But let's get this guy on my bench now and see how she performs. All right, so it is all set. I gained about 400 points in Cinebench R15. I know that's an older version of Cinebench, but that's the only one I had a bunch of reference points for this exact CPU for. Now, it is not going to run anywhere near as well as it would sustained with like a 240 or 360 millimeter AIO. The 120 is gonna get heat soaked way faster, but the 120 is gonna take way longer to heat soak than any air cooler, especially at $35. So I am extremely pleased with the performance that's sitting here silently crunching through this hour-long podcast render for my client. Price to performance, I really can't say anything bad about this AIO. Now, I know normally I avoid these cheap AIOs because 
pump failure on these cheaper ones is a higher risk, but to be perfectly honest, I've been through two air coolers in less than two years, so I might as well give this AIO a try. And at $35, it's about the same price as a decent air cooler, if not a little bit less. But that is it for this low quality video. I will see you guys in the next one.